Tanu Tribunal sacks Governor Yusuf and declares APC's Gawuna winner. And Tinubu's appointments not lopsided, says former House of Representatives Minority Leader Bawaji. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Ann Cole. The Kanu Governorship Election Petition Tribunal has sacked Governor Abba Kabera Yusuf, declaring the All Progressive Congress candidate Nasser Gawuna winner of the March 18 election. Yusuf, who contested on the platform of the New Nigeria People's Party NNPP, was earlier declared winner of the election by INEC. The court has deducted 165,663 votes from Governor Yusuf's total as invalid votes, stating that the ballot papers were not stamped or signed and therefore declared invalid. The NMPP has kicked against the judgment, vowing to appeal it at the court. Joining us to discuss this live is Ladipo Johnson, is the National Auditor and Chairman Disciplinary Committee of the NMPP. Mr. Johnson, it's so good to have you join us. Good evening. Good evening. Thanks for having me. Interestingly, uh, one would have said uh, it would have been better for us to be meeting on better circumstances. But um, uh, for, for the NNPP, did you see this coming? Well, um, we honestly, we didn't um, think this would happen because we felt the case was very clear. The APC went to court stating that there was overvoting violence and all sorts of things in over 1,000 polling units. They only called 30-something witnesses. And anyone that is a lawyer knows that to prove over voting or what have you in a polling unit, you need the agent or someone who was at that polling unit. So when you say there was over voting, there were all sorts of things, in a thousand units and you only call 30 something witnesses we knew for certain that all things being equal the petition was bound to fail yet this happened and i tell you Marianne, mm. um when you say you're deducting 165 plus um, votes because the ballot papers were not stamped or signed you have to, there are two things relating to that, which gives us confidence regarding uh, the grounds of appeal that um, we will be filing. One is that those 165 ballots, thousand ballots, the section um, 63.2, 63 subsection 2 or the Electoral Act 2022 states very clearly that where a presiding officer that's at the polling unit feels that um, a ballot sees that a ballot is not stamped or signed and but knows that it has come from the pad, you know, the voters' pad where all the ballots are then the presiding officer shall, it doesn't say may, it says shall use those ballot papers. Okay. Now, what the question that raises is why didn't their agents reject these ballots when they were being counted on election day? That's one. The second aspect of it is that um, <laughs> these ballots, is it only the NMPP votes, um, these ballot papers, is it only the NMPP votes they, um, they are affected? And if you remove a hundred and, uh, sorry, the second part, very importantly, is that these ballots, this issue, they were not tendered during trial, mm. right? The APC had closed their case. They were tendered from within the bar. 
That is what we call it when the lawyer presents it. That means we had no fair hearing. We were not able to cross-examine on the ballots and the papers that are presumably unstamped, unsigned. Your counsel was over. So you're saying your counsel was not privy to these ballot papers. So you didn't you were not able to authenticate if, what the AP they, say. The counsel, counsel objected, but the judges in their own wisdom felt they would still go ahead to admit these things. Hmm. And when we are admitting documents like this, they should come from the person that has custody. Mm. That is INEC. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't done. So I, I will not, um, I don't want to go too far on that because some might say the matter is sub yes. It's still in court, the process is there. Yes. You know, but there are grounds for us mm. to appeal this judgment, which we believe has brought about a travesty of justice. Mm. Um, let's let's talk about the politics of it, and 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 for now, stay away from the case in itself. Um, we heard um, the we heard we heard what the um, governor said right after this verdict was given. We hear that he even called for a twenty four hour curfew just to uh, make sure um, that there was some relative peace and calm in the state. But I want us to quickly take a. I want you to take a listen to what um, the governor-elect, um, who I am, the court has actually ordered INEC to issue a certificate of return to. Let's take a listen to what he has to say, and then we'll come back and talk about the politics of it. Okay. We have demonstrated it by bringing in invalid ballot papers, 165,000 of the ballot papers, and the court went through these ballot papers one after the other and confirmed that these ballot papers were not signed, stamped, and dated. And the law says it shall be signed, stamped, and dated. So all these three must be there. Declare the uh, candidate of the petitioner as a winner of the election, even though it's not a party to the matter. There are so many things in the matter, but the, 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 the tribunal has said it's on. We are going to consult our client, and then I can, show, I can assure you that we are going to appeal against this decision, and I can assure you that this decision will not stand at the court of appeal, because the law is very, very clear that the tribunal cannot enter as a witness in the matter. As human beings, their judgment may not be absolutely perfect. There are errors and misapplication of the law, as pointed out by our legal team. And that is the main reason why our Constitution provides for other stages to go on with, such as Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court. On this note, we have already instructed our legal team to appeal this judgment as soon as possible so as to ensure that justice is done to the good people of Kano State that elected us. Mr. Mr. Ladikbo, you, you, heard, um, you heard what the governor has said. So let's talk about the politics now. Governance, one way or the other, is going to be affected by this change. This change that has happened. Um, I, I want to point to a, a situation, a similar situation. Um, Lee Alimoke of Cross River State at some point was sacked by the court. He stayed in office and pursued that case. Could this be what would play out uh, with Yusuf? Definitely, I have no doubt about it. Um, by God's special grace, the, um, the governor will remain in office because the uh, we will file the um, notice of appeal, the appeal and uh, stay, a motion for stay of um, um, execution of the judgment. And I'm sure INEC has a practice, once they know that it is going to go to appeal and it is filed immediately, they will um, wait 
till the appeal is over, the process is over, before they withdraw or issue any certificate of return. Mm. Okay. But um, to the politics of it, Miriam, yes. the people of Kanu, the good people of Kanu state, especially those who voted massively for the NNPP, feel some form of deja vu. They remember 2019 that this was what was done to them. They voted, they won that election, and then the judiciary declared, the tribunal declared it, uh, um, uh, well, they de I, I don't, inconclusive. I don't know what, sorry, I don't know what's wrong with my brain. They declared <laughs> it inconclusive. Mm -hmm. Now we have this, and you know, you will recall that about a month uh, ago, I think the lady, the female judge, I think she was, the, she's the head of the panel, shouted out that people were trying to reach out to her um, with financial um, inducements. And it was in the press. And then we heard nothing about it. She didn't name those who were trying to reach out to her. And so you see the people in Mr. Johnson, are you still there? Mr. Johnson, can you hear me? Are you still there? Uh, I think that we have lost that connection with uh, Ladipa Johnson. Mr. Johnson, we lost, we lost, we, we, I'm so come. sorry, Mr. Johnson, we lost that connection for like a few minutes. So can you say what oh, you were saying? Minutes. Yes. Okay. Where, where did I, where did you... You were talking I, about, you, you, you're talking about the lady justice. Yes, I said the lady, you will recall, um, made a, shouted out that um, she was being um, sought after uh, for, with inducements. Mm. And nothing happened. We said a lot in the press about it. Nothing happened. Nobody asked her, the Judicial Council did not ask her that which senior advocate reached out to you. Who are these people? So with all these things, naturally the people in Kano felt that um, there were danger signals. And um, that is why you had people making statements. Look, Marianne, the moment, I'm sorry to say I'm a legal practitioner, or the moment I heard that judgment was being delivered via Zoom, I knew there was something wrong, even before the decision came down. But, but, what, is wrong, so but what, is wrong, what is wrong yeah. with delivering just judgment via Zoom? It's been no, done no, before. What is it, if, it were, if it were that dangerous, they would have moved the tribunal away from Kanu. They could do that. They didn't do that. You held the case in Kano. You held trial in Kano. And when you wanted to deliver judgment, you ran away. Hmm. You might understand it. I might understand it. That may be the security situation. But the people on the, on the streets, the grassroots, they won't feel that way. Hmm. The optics are not good. And the judiciary is on trial. I dare say that. Interesting. And it's not the, the, all my link, my like my learned friends keep saying, "No, oh, don't talk like that." That is not the issue. The issue is that the optics are not good, and the judiciary is leaving itself open to questioning. Hmm. Interesting. Let me let me push you further. Let's talk about you know because you mentioned the kind of people um, politically. Um, still, since we're still talking about the politics of it, politically, NNPP seems to have had a stronghold going into this election in Kano, based on the, um, you know, the notoriety of the flag bearer, the presidential flag bearer of the NNPP, talking about um, um, Rabi Kwankwa. So, um, for many people, um, they would have thought that, you know, this was signed, sealed, delivered. But unfortunately, this is the case. What does this say or what does this mean for the NNPP going forward? 
uh, especially being that you've also, no. as a party, had to deal with some skirmishes um, and some, you know, had some disciplinary issues to deal with within the party. Well, uh, Marianne, um, we always say that these things are sent to, to test us. Um, it's not new. In 2019, um, we believe we won that election, but we were put to the test, was taken away from us, snatched away from us, and um, we were out, but we kept working. And um, in 2023, we came back, rebranded as NMPP, and still took the state. Now, judicially, that, um, with uh, judicial pronouncement, that look, let me even say, I'm so sorry, Marianne. Let me go back to this. If you deduct 165,000 plus votes, the difference comes to, um, it now comes 800 and something to 800 and something, and apparently APC is leading with about 30 something thousand votes. Please recall that you still have 70,000 votes rejected. Now, that means that automatically it should go for a runoff. Mm. The judgment should not have been that it is the APC. They should have called for a rerun. But isn't that why there is an appeal, so that you can make that case since... Yes, we're since... going to appeal it. I'm just telling you mm -hmm. why we feel that there might... Why some people feel, not like you Johnson now, some people feel that there might be some mischief here. Mm. You understand? Mm -hmm. um, as a legal practitioner, I will just say that the judges misdirected themselves did not, um, they gave a ruling or a judgment that goes contrary to the preponderance of the facts and evidence before the tribunal. And their decision has caused a miscarriage of justice. Hmm. Interesting. That is what I will say as a legal practitioner. But you know, politicians will say other things. They will insinuate other things. Hmm. I'm still, I'm and still, unfortunately, at times you cannot blame them for that. I, I, but I'm still going to push you on, on you know, the NNPP and Kanu State and, you know, the notoriety of Rabi Kwankwasu. This is the second time, like you said, it's happening. Could this signal... Yes, it's because, you see, um, talking about Kwankwasu, the question is, why is this man so popular? Why is he so strong politically in Kano and in the Northwest generally? It's simple. It's because in his eight years as governor, he performed. The masses saw what he did in education, healthcare, infrastructure, etc. No one doubts that. So you see, they will go to any length to try to ensure that his machinery, that his political machinery, is brought to a standstill, is brought to a halt. But I say to you, Marianne, mm -hmm. that is just a joke. It will not happen. All these things strengthen us because we believe that we are there. The Kwankwesia ideology is about the man on the streets. We believe that we're there for them. And one day they will get up and rise up and realize that the people in government have weaponized poverty and made it impossible for them or difficult for them to make the right choices. You see, when a man is hungry, it's difficult for him to make a democratic choice. Because when he's hungry, these people come a day to elections with money, um, Indomie, um, uh, Ankara, and different things, rice, and give to them because they've made them poor. And in the last eight years, Nigerians have become poorer under the APC. And I dare say, in the last how many months from May, We've seen what has happened. 
you float the Naira at the same time as you're removing subsidy, this is what will happen. The Naira today is about 980 or so, 960, 70, 80 to the dollar. Inflation is rising. Yet these people are so impoverished, they cannot understand that it is these same people in government that have impoverished them. Mm. That is a problem. That is what we're facing in Nigeria. They have weaponized poverty. I'll ask again. Uh, I'll ask again. Yeah. Will this decision, one way or another, or could it, one way or another, um, distract from governance and delivering the dividends of democracy um, in the time being to the people of Kanu State, being that the governor will have no, to be preparing so. for, for, that, for, um, for the appeal? I think that, um, on the contrary, you see, we're, we're a strong and determined group. That's why people have the fear of this white, white and red army, the Kwankwesia army. We will continue to deliver um, good governance to the people of Kano State so that Nigerians will see that there's a genuine difference. Nigerians will see that. Yes, the court process will keep going on, but we're good enough to multitask. As the process is going on, we will ensure as much as possible that it does not disturb governance in any way. And I believe that at the end of the um, appeal process, by God's special grace, our mandate will be restored and um, Abba Kabir Yusuf will have his four years as governor and um, God willing, if he wants a second term, he will get it. Hmm. Interesting. Um, finally, is all calm within the NNPP as we speak, or do we still see, um, you know, um, certain people who are not happy? You know, the beauty in, in everything, uh, Marianne, in everything, um, you have to thank God. All things great and small. Even with this decision, which is meant to have knocked us off our feet, it is good because you see that um, those who claim to be the other side of NMPP have said nothing. They're there. In fact, one of them was saying, oh, it's good. It serves them right. That's Major Agbo. Mm -hmm. He said that. So now you know who the, which side is the real NMPP, the real NEC, the real National Working Committee. We are the ones that uh, have been affected by this decision, this ill thought of decision in Kano. Um, and we will back our governor, our candidate um, as a party. We will do that and render all the support we can from the national headquarters to the party in Kano State and to the um, um, Governor Kabir Yusuf All right. as well. Well, I want to say thank you. Uh, Ladiko Johnson is the National Auditor and Chairman Disciplinary Co Committee for the New Nigerian People's Party, NNPP. Thank you so much, Mr. Johnson, for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much. All right. Have a good evening. Thank you. We'll take a short break now. When we come back, we'll be talking about Mr. President's appointment and the complaints that these appointments might be lopsided. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs>